There it goes. Welcome, welcome, everybody. We are starting the podcast. I'm just sharing it at a few places before we officially start. But you can see in the meantime, I brought um, Santa with me. This is my dad, Glenn. <laughs> I'm making a list and I'm checking it twice. <laughs> All right, I got that shared there. So let me just find it here on my phone. There's all kinds of pre-show um, stuff that has to happen to make sure this all works like it should. But we do it all for you guys because we appreciate your feedback. I got a lot of good feedback this week, and uh, it always kind of gives me extra juice um, when it comes to getting these videos out for everybody. So, Dad, why did you want to be on this episode with me? Oh, it's real simple, Grady. I'll be teaching this lesson in a few weeks, and it's a good primer to get warmed up. Oh, that's true. That's true. We get to talk it through. That's what I have found that a lot of our listeners are actually teachers themselves, and they are trying to get um, you know, a better experience when it comes to being a teacher, getting inspiration and ideas. So... You're among good people. Oh, it's always good. <laughs> One of my friends, Mark, uh, called me or got together with me a few weeks ago. And he says, hey, Glenn, I found this great podcast and you're in it. Would you care if I, care if I used it? <laughs> <laughs> and it was you. <laughs> and you're talking about me. <laughs> I said, no, you go he right ahead. He wasn't supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I got everything set up. I have the Chromecast downstairs <laughs> showing it for the family downstairs. So oh, good. they're watching us now, too. Hey, kids. Um, so we'll get started for real. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Third Hour of Power. This is Grady of This Mormon Life, and this week I have had my dad be our guest. And today we're going to be talking about Lesson 21 from the Howard W. Hunter Manual, Faith and Testimony. Hey, Dad, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, sure. I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who are watching on the uh, the video feed, we are on the same camera. I'm in California this week, and uh, it's always fun to see my family, and the nice thing is is that Sometimes it's nice to just do a video. We've had me and my sister have been guests in the same office before, and, and my dad and I have been guests in the same office and also remotely. But, you know, it's always nice to have family that you can talk about gospel topics with. And so I'm really thankful for my dad for saying, hey, I'm teaching that lesson in a few weeks. Can I come talk about it with you? Yeah. So, Dad, what were some of the things that stood out to you in, in the lesson? Uh, you know, there was a few things that really uh, hit home with me. One of them is, and I'm going to read it here, is the most powerful force in human nature is the spiritual power of faith. Um, you know, faith is something you really can't put your finger on. It's something you have to believe, you have to know, um, you have to pray and exercise it. And uh, faith c can change your, your soul, your attitudes, and your life. Uh, you've... Remember the story about faith uh, the size of mustard so you can move a mountain? You know, I'll probably never move any mountains, but that, that's a very small amount of faith to make a great change in people's lives. Yeah, and I like the, what you said about it being a power. A lot of times we think of faith as something that we have to have, or we have to do. It's, you know, we have to, we have, to have faith. Um, and it's not just about a sense of belief. Faith is more than that. Faith is a power. It's something that when you show your belief, you put your belief in action, then, you know, there's a power that you receive that helps you to do things that you normally normally couldn't do. Uh, I love, let's see, which quote is it here? This was a good lesson. I actually highlighted a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to just cut to the, the best. Um, I like here in section, I think it's section three, it says that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just a gospel of belief. It is a plan of action. We do not say observe my gospel. We say live it. We do not say note its beautiful structure and imagery. He said go, do, see, feel, give, believe. We do those things. We proactively live our faith and then we are able to get then faith in as a power and it helps us to be able to do all those things because a lot of times those things are hard. 
a lot of times it doesn't come easy for us. It's, <laughs> it's, that sounds great. I'm going to go do things and then challenges come. And the power of faith is what helps us to get through those things, get through to the other side and be able to see, hey, I did it. I made it to the other side of whatever it was I was trying to get through. The lesson also points out that, um, that the things require effort and require uh, stamina. And the things that are not easy are the ones that are uh, the most valuable, the ones that you can get the most out of, like exercising faith. It's not always easy. Yeah, or just exercise. You know, you think about if you wanted to be strong, you can't just want to be strong. You have to go out and you have to do things. You have to physically exercise. I guess we'll never be strong then, huh? I'll always be strong. I might not be, be. I, I might not always be fit. <laughs> um, and the, you know what you're talking about there. It says that as a general rule, um, we do not get things of value unless we are willing to pay the price. That's you know, right. we've got to cut out donuts. We've got to go running. We've got to lift weights if we want to be physically strong or physically fit. Mm -hmm. But if we want to be spiritually fit, if we want to be spiritually strong, we have to put forth that effort. We have to. Um, do the, the things that are the basics of, of reading, scriptures, prayer. And, and I don't mean as that they are trivial in nature. They're not. They're extremely important. Um, but as well as we need to do the things that, um, you know, exemplify how important in our commitment towards Christ. I think two weeks ago or two lessons ago, we talked about just our commitment towards God and how in hard times, that's where we really see our commitment is real. That's where we really see that our faith is real. We say, you know, you've given me a hard thing and if I didn't believe this to be true, I wouldn't do it. But because I do believe this, I'm going to go forward and, and do these things that are, are put before me and do this task I, I don't know that I'm supposed to do. That's a key point, uh, the doing part. Uh, so the Lord said, um, read and study and believe and then go do it and test me. See if I'm correct. See if I will follow my word when I promise certain blessings for keeping certain commandments. Yeah, What so... I never say when I was a missionary in class, it's my, it's like my, my number 10 cardinal rules. It's like number one. That's the number one sin. I never say on my mission when I am in class. Um, but since we're not in class, I will say <laughs> on my mission, um, oftentimes we would go and we would visit um, families that we were teaching. And we always leave a family that we had visited with some sort of commitment, you know, we had a lesson today. Now we want you to learn more, or study more, or help gain a testimony and gain faith about these things. We want you to read this passage. We want you to read these scriptures. We don't want you to pray about this. And if they didn't do those things, the temptation was to say, okay, well, moving on. <laughs> but that's a bad way to do things. And so we, we take a step back and we say, okay, we need to study more about this topic because we want to make sure you really understand it before we move forward. And so we wouldn't go on to the next lesson. We would talk about something from the scriptures. And I loved when we talked about faith. I would often talk about Alma um, chapter 32. When he talks about faith being a little seed. And that idea that you, there you go, the mic's in the way. A little <laughs> seed. And, um, and that you have to act on it. You have to nourish it. And, you know, if you don't do any of those things and the seed doesn't grow, you can't say, well, it wasn't a good seed. It's not the seed's fault. It's our own fault. We have to put forth that effort. To gain faith and if we do it grows and we have to keep putting forth effort and it keeps growing until it bears fruit and we get blessings from from doing those things but i always love that chapter when it comes talks about faith because i think it's a wonderful way to explain that, yes. that principle of of putting in the effort and um that seed faith is also something that you have to believe in even though you can't see it um, I think one of the greatest examples of that faith and one of the greatest examples of the um, 19th century or late modern times is Joseph Smith. And that passage in the Bible in James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, they give it to all men liberally, and it breedeth not, and it shall be given. I mean, how much faith did Joseph Smith have to have and how much of an impact did that scripture have on him? We've all read that, but did it, did it move us like it moved Joseph Smith to actually go out and say, Father in heaven, I, I need some help here. You said ask, and I'm asking. I'm sure he was a little surprised at the answer he got, but he went forward anyway. But that's that's probably the best example of faith that we have in modern times. Yeah, and it, it talks about in Joseph Smith's history that he went out to the place that he had predestined to go. 
Like, it wasn't just that he read it and said, hmm, now what? And then a pillar of light appears. It's, he thought about it a lot and, and pondered it. And finally he thought, you know, I need to go and find answer. I need to go find a place where I can be alone, prepare myself, and pray and ask. Um, you know, I, I just think it's so important that that's one of the biggest things for us, the game faith. If you're in a position where maybe you don't feel like you have the faith that you you would like to have, that your your, your testimony is is not as strong as you'd like for it to be, you know, think about things that you can do to help it to grow. Um, think about what you can do and the, the things you've been asked to do. And to say, if I, if I do these things, will I see results or will I see blessings come? Because um, I know in my life I've, I've done that. I've had challenges and, you know, when I act, I, I saw the blessings come. You know, one of the reasons that I'm, I'm visiting California mm -hmm. is because we felt inspiration to move to Arizona. And it was hard. And right before we left, you know, my daughter had a bunch of health challenges. And I remember my, my mom, we were downstairs in the kitchen and she says, well, are you still going to go to Arizona? And I said, I thought about it and I thought, well, of course, I felt like I was supposed to go. And Heavenly Father knew the situation that I'm in. He knew what the situation we were going to find ourselves in. Why would that inspiration change? I had faith that I had received an answer to prayers and now I needed to then act on that. And then that same action gave me the power that I needed to go forward without fear. Um, there was some nervousness at times. There were some close calls and some things that I wasn't quite sure if it would all work out. But I had faith to move forward, and it, and it gave me the strength that I needed to send everything up in a container to Phoenix. And the guy says, oh, where's your new house at? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, do you have like a work address? I don't have a job yet, but I know I'm supposed to go to Arizona, so just ship it to Phoenix, and we'll figure it out. Um, that happens through faith. That doesn't happen through logic and study and, and balancing out. Now, those things can help support faith. I'm not saying that you don't need to, you know, also look for things that are logical and sound and make sense but it's through faith that really gives us the strength to do those things because you know there's roller coasters that i know that there's tests that say we've tested this roller coaster it's 100 percent safe guess what i'm not going to go on it because i just don't have faith in it um no matter what the science says and so <laughs> it's important that the, the faith is what gives us the actions that we need to move forward and those evidences just help to support our faith not faith to support the evidence you know, speaking of evidence um, and mysteries of the universe and things, our Father in Heaven knows everything. He knows all the logistics. He knows all the physics. He he knows everything. He's Think about the stuff he's got to know. He knows how to build things, how to design things. He knows quantum physics. That's probably like kindergarten to him. <laughs> but as, as we gain faith, we come to a point to where we may not need the faith because we have a, a sheer knowledge of things. I think of what many of us have probably did today. We, we use faith. We were driving our car. We took our foot off the gas, put it on that little brake pedal, and we pushed. And we had faith that we would stop. And uh, many of us have that faith. Well, I have that knowledge. Because I work on cars, I understand the physics of it all. I understand that when you push on the brake pedal, it pushes a rod, which pushes a piston, which pushes fluid, which moves through brake lines, goes to another cylinder, squeezes pads against the rotor through friction, it slows the rotor and the wheel down, and through friction, it'll stop the car. I don't need that faith because I now have a sure knowledge because of those things. And with the gospel, eventually, we will have a sure knowledge of everything, yeah. whether in this life or the next. And I accept that on faith. I don't know anything about brakes. The, uh, the automotive knowledge has definitely skipped a generation. <laughs> and But I know that my dad has done the study. He's a firsthand witness of the modern age genius of brakes. And so because he's been a firsthand knowledge, I can say when he tells me, okay, Grady, I fixed your brakes. Now you can stop the car. I just trust him. I trust him because I know that he has been there. And it's the same thing with our prophet. You know, we can, when he tells us what we should be doing, that we can trust that it comes from God. We can trust that these things will help us to be happy because we know that our prophet is having that firsthand revelation and experience with God, and we can have faith in in that communication and that messaging. You know, as you read during the, uh, through the lesson, in the very early times when uh, President Hunter was not President Hunter, he was just an apostle, uh, he makes some comments in there about, you know, 
I'm, I'm taking a lot of things on faith here. I'm thinking, that guy's going to be a prophet, you know. He's, at some <laughs> point in time, he has to know this stuff. <laughs> I mean, at some point in a, an apostle or prophet's life, does he ever see the, the Savior? Yeah, and I know that there's <laughs> some that are recorded instances of that, but I've always been curious to kind of, of of what that communication is like. And I know that that um, I can't I can't quote it, but to paraphrase, just the idea that a lot of times the way they receive their inspiration is the same way we do, through thoughts, through feelings, through you know whisperings of the Holy Ghost. Um, but as you live a life of acting on those promptings, you become very good at knowing which ones are stray thoughts, which ones are, you know, political influences, and which mm -hmm. ones are the Spirit. And I think that's the one of the things that we need to learn. That's one of the things that I'm trying really hard with my youth that I teach in Deacon's Quorum. I want them to understand how to listen to the Spirit so that they can have faith that if they listen to that prompting and act on it, that the Lord will be behind them in what they're doing. Greg's uncle has a friend uh, where he lives in another part of California, and uh, Greg's uncle's friend uh, is in the stake presidency. And when they were called, one of the other members of the presidency and his wife were interviewed by the general authority for that position, that calling as a member of the state presidency. And as the general authority made the calling, his wife goes, there must be some mistake here. Deadpan, straight face, the apostle goes, sister so-and-so, we don't make mistakes. <laughs> 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 I'm sure she said that it kind of a shock and a jest, not a, a serious nature, but uh, it, it emphasizes the point that um, the Lord's apostles don't make mistakes. They have had a lifetime of service and getting ready to understand these things. Look at how long President Monson has been in the Lord's service full time. I mean, that's just like all he's ever known. Yeah. Since he was, I think, what, 36, he was ordained an apostle. And yeah. He's 80 something now, I think. I mean, it's just. It's amazing. And so that kind of lifetime, you know, we, we can trust our, our leaders. And, you know, the, the biggest thing is that when we hear them, we can know that what they're teaching us, especially with conference happening just last month, when we hear them, we know that what they're teaching will help us to gain more faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ, and, and in the plan of our Heavenly Father. Um, is there any last minute things you want to add to this lesson? Yeah, there's one last thing I want to add to it. As, as we go through lessons like this and we... Uh, talk to our quorums and the Relief Society and wherever we happen to might be teaching in any circumstance, the most important thing is not the lesson, it's not what we know, it's not the things we impart. The most important thing that we are doing is to bring our Father in Heaven's children to Him, that they may be able to live with Him for eternities. And that, that's the whole goal. Everything else that we do in the church is just stuff. Our goal is to bring our Father's Heaven children eternal life yeah and so if you're one of our teachers that listen think about that think about your class your group your quorum what in this lesson is going to be what your members of your quorum need to hear to be able to make a step closer to that to be able to get closer to the point where they can live with their heavenly father again um you know there's a lot of stuff in this lesson and don't feel like you need to rush through and cover it all pick the parts out that you think they need to keep moving forward on that path and if you do You'll have a wonderful lesson, and, and your your class will get a lot more out of it. And end on time. Yes, <laughs> always end on time, which I think we've gone over our time. But that's okay because we're not a class. So you can do what you want. You can fast forward if we're going too slow or put it on double double time on the podcast. Um, but thank you guys so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, I love doing this. I love getting to do it with my dad, Glenn. Um, if you are in Orange County and you've got brakes that are squeaking, go to Glenn's mm -hmm. Alignment. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, that's a bonus. That's part of the reason that we came down here was because our car was making this weird ga -ga 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 when we braked. And, you know, with four kids, four grandkids in the car, he said, come on down. I'll take care of it. And um, <laughs> and so if you've got that same ga -ga 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 when you brake, come see him. Um, even if you live far away, drive all the way out here like I did um, because it's definitely worth it. But also, if you are looking for more things to do to get more out of your Sunday um, lessons. Check out our benefactors over at This Week in Mormons. They have a podcast called Sunday School Bonanza where they talk about gospel doctrine covering the Book of Mormon this year. Um, right now, I think we're there uh, in 4th Nephi, maybe finishing up 3rd Nephi, but it's great stuff and they're wonderful lessons um, as well as their flagship, just This Week in Mormons, 
where they talk about current affairs in the church. We're talking a lot right now about the election cycle um, and just about all these LDS leaders that have spoken out and saying who they support and, and, and their concerns about the uh, the choice of candidates right now, and it's an exciting time. So if you just want some more insight of some ideas of who you might be wanting to vote for on November uh, 28th, because Trump said November 28th in the press conference, <laughs> um, or on the 8th if you're not voting for him, um, then, then uh, go check those out. You'll, you'll appreciate it. But until next time, we thank you guys for joining us, and we wish you all a fond adieu.